Hi there, Sage from Keeper. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to talk about custom branding and white labeling your Keeper experience. Make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all future releases. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or click on the purple widget in the bottom right corner of your Keeper account and send us a message. And lastly, check out the description of this video so you can find helpful links and resources covering today's topic. Let's dive in. Setting up the custom branding for your Keeper account is only available on our premium version and is $10 a month USD per connected client. Now, why would you want to have this feature enabled? Well, enabling the white labeling option in Keeper allows you to do a few different things. One, you can host the portal at a subdomain of your URL. So for example, rather than the URL of your Keeper portal showing the default keeper.app slash client login address, you can actually change it to show your domain instead and have it say something more like clients.yourpracticesname.com. The second reason is you can replace the default colors, which I admit are very, very purple, in Keeper's portal with your own unique brand colors. Three, you can add your own logo to the client portal. Four, you can send emails through Keeper from your own email rather than the default questions at keeper.app. And lastly, you can send vendor requests and collect W9s from the portal. Now, the first step in getting this started is to create something called a CNAME record. Now, a simple way to think about a CNAME record is like giving a website a shortcut or even a nickname. So for example, the default address, which we talked about earlier, for Keeper's portal is keeper.app slash client login. So what we're gonna do is create a CNAME record. So instead it says something more like clients.yourpracticename.com. And in order for us to do something like that, we need to log into the server in which you created the domain you'd like to use in the first place. Now this could be something like GoDaddy, Wix, Google Domain, Squarespace, or something else. And Keeper actually has instructions on how you can create this record. So if you navigate to the bottom right corner of your account, you're gonna find this purple widget. We're gonna click on it and we're gonna go right to the help center. Now that we're at the help center in the search bar, we're gonna type in custom branding setup and we're gonna click on the very first article. Once you're here, I'm going to have you scroll down on this page until you see the hyperlinks under the name server host instructions. And based on the name server host that you use, click on the appropriate link and it's going to have instructions on how you can create a CNAME record. Just make sure that once you are creating the CNAME record, you scroll up to the top of this article and you follow these instructions. Big thing is for the host name to put in clients and for the data or value to put in small dash water dash 8854 period fly period dev. And once you've completed this, make sure to send us a message by navigating to the purple widget and sending us a message. And if you get tripped up or confused, you can also reach out to us for some guidance as well. The next step is changing the visual display of your portal. So we're gonna to go to the practice settings in the top right corner, navigate to the client portal tab on the left-hand side, and then click on the branding tab on the top right. And from here in the white label section, we're gonna make sure that we upload a practice logo. We're then gonna upload a favicon, and then we're going to edit the brand color button color and background color. You're welcome to use some of the default options, but if you have specific hex codes, you're welcome to put them in. And then make sure that you toggle between the client portal and client login tab, just so you can double check that it looks exactly how you want it to. Afterwards, you're gonna scroll up and you are going to save the changes that you just made in this top right corner. Afterwards, you're going to click on the practice email. Now by default, emails that get sent to your clients from Keeper come from a questions at keeper.app email address. But since we want to make sure that they're coming from you, we're going to connect an email in its place. Now, since this is on a practice level, that means that no matter who on your team sends a message to the client from Keeper, it will look like it is coming from the email that you are going to brand right here. So make sure that you use one that you want to be the face of your company. Typically, we see firms use info at addresses or contact at or support at insert the practice name.com. But if you're a solopreneur, feel free to use your own email. And then afterwards, you can go down below and you can create a signature and save it. That way it shows your name, your number and any other information you want to include at the bottom of each message. Once that is set up, you're then going to navigate to the practice phone number. And this is going to be a brand new number that you're about to create. This is not a current number or a practice number that you're currently using we're going to create a new one. Now, since I already have one connected, you don't see the option, but if you haven't connected one yet, it's gonna have a button that lets you select a number. It's gonna prompt you to put in an area code. And from there, it will present you with some options of phone numbers that you can select. And the main purpose is to be a text reminder to clients, the same way that they can get email reminders. 
Clients do not call into this number. They're not gonna text message you and have a conversation through this number. It really is just meant to notify them about outstanding questions. And if you're using our Keeper Receipts feature, they're also able to send in receipts to that number. And once you've set that up, you have completed these three options and you can go right back to the main dashboard. That's all I wanted to cover today. Appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date on all future releases. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section below and feel free to send us a message using the purple widget in the bottom right corner. Check out the description because we'll include some helpful resources covering today's topic and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Take care.